Yeah. They go above and beyond. They treat you like a king. I, mean, I know being number one, the first time it's been done at UMass, you know, it's kind of special. And uh, so they kind of treat me like I'm the golden child down there, you know. But the, the care that I received there, you know, outside of Boston, just pop, pop and none. I mean, it's just, you can't, you can't say a bad word about it. You know, they, 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 live, they saved my life. Uh, now we're waiting for the, the, the hot transplant. Yeah. And that could be a week, it could be a month, it could be a year, it could be two. We don't really know how long it, it, uh, it takes. I know that uh, they've got me on the list. Yeah. And I don't know how high up I am, but they, they don't tell you these things. So it's a matter of waiting for a phone call. And uh, once that phone call comes through, we're going to Boston. Where would you need to go for the transplant? Well, I'm going to go to the University of Boston. Okay. And you have to have tough country. Yeah. Here. And there's another whole team of cardiologists there that I've been dealing with when I went for my evaluation. Yeah. I spent uh, a couple of weeks at UMass being evaluated, and they did probably 85% of it. Then I went to Tufts for a week, and they finished the eval. I met with all the surgeons and the team, and uh, just, it, it, it's incredible. The, the amount of attention that they pay to you. Uh, like I said, I, I can't say enough about any one of them. Every single, everyone I've ever come into contact with, I mean, the nurses, the staff, they, they just, they, 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 they bring you in like your family. been that you've been, you know, dealing with problems with your heart? It's been a long time. Uh, I had my first heart attack at 49 years old. Wow. And I've had cardiac issues ever since, and then I had back problems. And the back problems kind of compounded themselves into surgeries that didn't really work out that well. Yeah. And then the cardiac problems came back, and they just kept getting worse and worse and worse. I ended up going in for a triple bypass in 2012 at UMass, and that worked for a while, and then things just started going downhill again. So, subsequently, I was going in for some testing, and we met up with this uh, nurse practitioner, Maggie Cabral. And uh, I have to say, if it wasn't for Maggie, I wouldn't be where I am today. She started this whole ball rolling, and one day we were sitting in her office, and we were looking at each other, and just about the same time, we both looked at each other and the word transplant came into play. And she goes, you know, I was just thinking the same thing. And I'm like, well, I, I don't see any other avenue for me to go but to get a heart transplant or I'm going to die. And she goes, yeah, I think you're right. So she started setting up all the stuff. And, you know, next thing you know, last May 3rd, we got it done. Uh, it was a success. It's a long operation. It's a very painful recovery. I had already had been open before, so they opened me again. Now with the heart transplant, I'm going to have the third, it's going to be open up a third time. But they say that the heart transplant itself is a grief. You come out of that much easier than you come out of the, the bad. You know, you know, with the bad, they've got to install the hardware. Yeah, to, I'm sure they have to go actually in Right, they've got to go in, they've got to attach that pump to the bottom of your ventricle, and then they've got to, they've got to attach it to the pulmonary arteries and I mean this is what I know about it it takes the blood from the ventricle and pushes it up to the top of the heart out to the rest of your body 